disappointed. I, obviously, I'm disappointed. Uh, uh, but I will continue to be the, the, the best baseball fan in the world. Um, there's two things I learned that I could do. I, I could hit a baseball. And uh, I think I can learn or teach a lot of people not to make the same mistakes that I made. That, that they can learn from my situation. Not one sports argument spans the generations like the one emanating from the legend of Charlie Hustle, one of the greatest players in baseball history who remains a potential Hall of Famer in the cold. This while others who have also cheated have been allowed to not only remain around the game, but hold jobs on the field. Pete Rose has been denied his latest chance for a return to the game, bringing back the talk of a man who couldn't tell the truth for 25 years, and maybe a sport that can't tell itself the truth about which cheats they hold close. Our first guest is an award-winning sports writer, assistant managing editor at Sports Illustrated, and author of Pete Rose, An American Dilemma, a great book, Costia Kennedy. Joined by veteran baseball broadcaster who's called games for the Rockies, Mariners, Phillies, and those Mets who have broken my heart far too many times to count. He's heard that a million times. Seth Everett. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here tonight. Costia, let me begin with you. Is Pete Rose now being punished for the gambling or the subsequent lies that he managed to tell over and over and over again? Oh, well, it's definitely the, the gambling still. Uh, and I mean, he, he told... told Commissioner Manfred in their discussion that he still bets on baseball. And even though he still bets on baseball legally, and that might be okay for you or me, it's not okay for Pete Rose. And I think that once he said that, the commissioner really had no choice. Uh, you can't, he couldn't have let him back in the game, and then he's a hitting instructor somewhere and he is still betting on baseball. Uh, you know, you just can't set yourself up that way. So I, I think it's very specific that uh, it's his lifestyle now that has continued to keep him out. Ah, there it is. Seth, isn't that the word in there? It's his lifestyle now, because that's the thing. Hasn't baseball been just waiting for Pete just to say that I've changed, just to at least come clean and maybe try? It doesn't seem as if he really has ever tried. He still manages to back up and say, I'm a good guy, but not really, Mr. Commissioner. Well, I actually find him to be a good guy. I like him a lot personally. Uh, that doesn't change the fact that you know he's a gambler. You could be—he's been called a degenerate gambler. It's—it's it's okay. I mean, people who gamble are not the dregs of society. But the problem is, is he never changed anything. The first time he applied for reinstatement, he did so through a book because he was hard up for cash. Pete Rose was never getting back in. There was never any drama. I actually applaud Commissioner Manfred about even looking at it as closely as he did. To me, it's an open and shut case. Once they found out he's still betting on baseball, there was no debate there. Costia, let's talk about the dichotomy that rolls here in baseball. Here we have Pete Rose, who will likely never be allowed in the Hall of Fame. Yet we have Mark McGuire, who's working for a baseball team and has for a long time. Barry Bonds, who just got a job with the Miami Marlins, working in a baseball team. We've got so many guys who are sitting out there, either accused or proven, who have taken PEDs along the way, yet they are allowed in baseball. They cheated. So the fan is going to ask, and they keep asking, Costia, what's the difference? Well, it, it's a very interesting point you bring up because I think that the argument, the Hall of Fame argument and the banishment argument, uh, in some ways they're very different because gambling poses such a serious threat to the integrity of the game. But I do think that, you know, if you bring somebody like Barry Bonds in, who, whatever else, he had one of the most sophisticated and may still have one of the most sophisticated ways of avoiding drug tests, of getting these steroids into his body, of using it to his advantage. And if you're having him as a, as a hitting instructor, and that's not to say he's going to teach those lessons to a, a younger player. Even not to say he won't either. No, exactly. And I do think that it, it would make me uncomfortable to know that somebody with that, not, I think Barry Bonds deserves another chance in many ways to do things, but that specific sin of being, that he, like Pete, were, were able to evade, evade punishment and evade the authorities on something, that would make me uncomfortable to have him that close to my young players. Seth, let me give you something else here, too. Pete Rose actually has appeared on MLB Network. MLB Network is owned and operated by Major League Baseball. He gets You're paid to be right. a commentator there. So when baseball says, wait a minute, integrity of the game, we have to keep him out, you pay him. You put him on your air. Doesn't that tell us something about baseball, how they're, they're a bunch of frauds to begin with in this case? I do know that baseball had a chance to overrule on the Fox Sports thing this year. They didn't. Um, but I'll take the hypocrisy one step further. 
I don't have a problem with the ruling, so I want to make sure that's clear. The Hall of Fame is a museum. Baseball doesn't rule the Hall of Fame. But I have a huge problem with baseball profiting over fantasy sports. There is a show on MLB.com called the Fantasy 411. Major League Baseball profits from that. They have a a great deal with DraftKings. They profit from that a great deal. I have a problem with that. I don't mind fantasy sports. I don't want to be misconstrued. You can be a, a, a gambler all you like. I just don't want the official sports league that's trying to hold your sport to a higher standard profiting over gambling. Costa, 30 seconds to you. Isn't that really something that needs to be discussed here is the fact that, look, Pete Rose doesn't make baseball money right now. If he made him millions of dollars, they'd probably let him in tomorrow. Well, maybe that's true and maybe it's not. I do think it's different from having him on a network uh, than having him come and be, again, be close to players, be a hitting instructor, be something like that. It is a little different, and I see that difference. I don't think baseball's out to bury Pete Rose, and they haven't done that. He's really been very specific. Manfred went so far as to say, I think that the criteria for getting into a Hall of Fame is different from working for baseball, uh, and I think that, that, that he's pretty clear on that. Just quickly on Seth, I agree with the point about fantasy sports, and you think about what if it's – Everything had happened exactly as it happened, but it had been playing fantasy instead of gambling. It what really would the repercussions is, it's, have been? It's we an interesting – I'll tell you, we've got to spend a little more time on this one of these days when we have time because that involvement yeah. with fantasy sports certainly is something that needs to be looked at, and uh, it's that kind of like that nudge, nudge, wink, wink thing. Seth Everett, yeah. Costa Kennedy, reminder once again, everybody, Costa's book is Pete Rose, An American Dilemma. Read it. Learn about this. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Telling it like it is next on The Hard Line.